In this mini video, I shall talk about sequential data access and random data access. Strictly not a part of your syllabus, but it is so frequently spoken about. It's a good idea to just have a brief idea about what is sequential data access and what is random data access. Now let's say I've got only 26 friends. And the funny thing about all those 26 friends is they start from the alphabet A and end at the alphabet Z. It means each of my friend has a unique name. Okay, for example, A is Arun. My second friend B is Barun. C is Chatur. Okay, D is somebody. And last Z is Zara. So this way I have only 26 friends with all 26 different names and each one of them having the first alphabet of their English language starting from A to Z in their names. So what I do is along with all these names, I have recorded the address, their phone number, email and everything. Now what I want to do is I want to have a system where I can quickly find their phone number and address. So what I do is A for Arun, I keep it in box with the label A. B for Barun, I keep it in box B. C for Chatur, I keep it in box C and Z for Zara, I keep it in box Z. So from A to Z, I have created 26 boxes and in each of the boxes, I have kept the details of one person, phone and address. So let's say for example, somebody is working for me, I say just get me Chatur's details. So he or she will directly go to box C, pick up Chatur's information and give it to me what is his address and phone number. This is an example of random or systematic data access because I could go straight away to C without having to check A and B and all those fellows. But now let's say what I do is I get somebody who is not very interested to work with me. So what he does is instead of keeping A in Arun, for example, maybe he kept B here. Instead of keeping Chatur in C, he may have kept it in Z. So he just keeps it anyhow he likes. He doesn't keep it A as Arun, B as Barun, C as Chatur. He just mixes them and puts them in the different 26 boxes. Now I ask him, can you help me get Zara? He can't go here and get me Zara because he has been careless. Maybe Zara is in B, maybe Zara is in C. So he has to open each and every box and check for the contents to see if it contains the name and address and phone number of Zara. Here I have to check every box to find out Zara. This is known as sequential access. So if you look at this diagram by Wikipedia Commons, you can see sequential access like this. So if my luck is good, it may be the first record itself. If my luck is bad, it may be the last record. Okay, or it may be in between. So the average time is somewhere in between. Random access is something like this fellow. Say I say, go and get me data from three, it may end up going here and getting the data from three. So random access goes directly to the place where I, the data is stored, whereas sequential access has to visit all the data items which are stored before it. All right. So this should give you an idea about sequential and random data access. Now let me try to help you understand the differences. I've already told you to reach a specific item in sequential data is access I need to compare and check all the items before it whether it is the item I am looking for here it directly goes to the location to find the data the advantage of this is it will reach that data irrespective of where it is located in a constant amount of time if it is in one also it will take the same amount of time if it is in four also it will take the same amount of time if it is here also it will take the same amount of time next examples of random access memory is your RAM. RAM has to be random access memory because then only it's able to be super fast. Whereas your old magnetic tape or if you have got your cassettes in your house, you can ask your mommy, papa if they listen to songs. The old cassettes were sequential. From a cassette, suppose you were listening to song one, you couldn't directly go to song five because you have to pass through two, three, four and then reach song five. Whereas in your new CD players, you can directly go to that particular track and play song number five. So that is an example of a random data access. Now, the important part is devices which are sequential access are generally much cheaper, have a very huge capacity, whereas random access devices are expensive and have less capacity. Now, we cannot say this is useful and this is useless. It all depends on the application you are really going to work for. If you have to store a large amount of data, 
okay then of course magnetic tape or sequential access is preferred if you want data to be accessed very quickly where speed is more important than the quantity of storage then you will go with the random access data storage or data access now an example of where you will use a sequential data access is let's say i have 50000 employees in my factory and for each of those 50000 employees i am generating the salary since i am generating the salary for each employee i will read employee number 1 based on his basic or her basic i'll calculate the total salary i'll go to second employee do the same thing third employee do the same thing this will continue till employee number 50000 so here sequential access is more sensible but suppose i am searching for ravi in a huge data file consisting thousands of records okay that time you are preferred to have a random data access so with this i hope you are having a decent idea of what is sequential data access and what is random data access these diagrams are courtesy of wikimedia commons and they are acknowledged in the description of this particular video